Pick a move in the ring. You can hit me with the words you fling. All right, how's it going, everybody? It's Nick Akin. I'm back in the office in Hong Kong. We're finally open again after the third wave of the coronavirus has, has settled down a bit. So, yeah, the studio's a bit messy. Apologies. But I'm lucky to be joined today by SCMP contributor Andy Whitelaw. And we've also got Leon Jennings. They're both in Kuala Lumpur. Leon is obviously the man behind Asian Persuasion MMA. Guys, how's everything going today? Yeah, very well, mate. Nice to join you. KL Massive in the house. Kuala Lumpur. Yeah, outnumbering you. Yeah, damn. I've got to find someone from Hong Kong to come on here. But yeah, this is Andy's uh, debut, I think, on the podcast. He's done a few articles for us. Uh, you excited, Andrew? Very much so. I can barely uh, contain myself to my chair, but very much happy to have so many fights coming back at us thick and fast. I've really enjoyed uh, you and John representing it and some of the other team. Some good stuff. Uh, some quality one championship shows as well. Some good uh, Muay Thai analysis in there. Those Thailand shows have really kept us going. Huh? And, now, and now we return to Singapore. So looking forward to that. Yep, we are back. We are going to preview Reign of Dynasties, which is on Friday, obviously at Singapore Indoor Arena. But first, we were just going to recap all the big news. Chatri dropped some some big stuff yesterday on a conference call with all the media. I think you guys were both on it. Uh, yeah. What's the big takeaway, Leon, for you? Obviously, we knew before there were going to be four title fights uh, inside the Matrix on October 30th. And any other big news yesterday? I think the big thing is that he's planning on doing similar shows in Singapore elsewhere in Asia. So it's not only going to be in Singapore. So I'd imagine they'll try and do cards, obviously behind closed doors with bubbles in Manila and Jakarta. I would think he didn't he didn't state that, but that's what I would think, uh, which obviously makes it easier for those home countries to have their their home fighters compete. Yeah, Manila makes sense, obviously, with the Team Lakai guys all there. But he did say that Edward Falayang is going to be fighting, isn't he, yeah. in Singapore on that October 30th card, right? Yeah, for you two, Team Lakai, but you mentioned yeah, Edward Falayang against Antonio Caruso. That's a fun matchup as well. Antonio Caruso trains with Martin Ewing and Ong La in Sanford MMA. Tough Aussie. Um, yeah, so that, that's going to be a fun one. I and think Andrew. the interesting takeaway uh, for me was the news about the Atomweight Grand Prix. A lot of people speculated yeah. that with the pregnancy announcement, Angela will be vacating her title, but it doesn't look to be the case. Chatry announced that the Grand Prix should take place around January with the winner of that GP then taking on Angela for the title. I found that one of the most interesting announcements because Angela's going to be out for a little while. I fully expected her to vacate. Having the Grand Prix, though, is, is a really cool way of, of deciding the challenger, right? Because Atomweight, for me, has really quietly come along as one of the most exciting divisions in one at the moment, just because if you look at the amount of emerging talent, I mean, we all talk a lot about Stamp Fairtex, and, and you look how young she is, not just in her age, but in her MMA career, but what splash she's made. And then we've got Isuki Hirata as well in there. And then they could... They could easily get in Shuto champion uh, Mina Karube as well, who's like a veteran. So you got the other side of the coin. And uh, I think doing a Grand Prix is a really cool way of doing it. And it's a prestigious title in its own right then. And Denise Samuanga, of course, uh, I don't know. I, I wondered if she might be a bit gutted in a way because she was all primed, wasn't she, for the Angela Lee title shot. And then Angela gets pregnant. But the funny dynamic there, of course, is that Angela is, is an, a massive idol for Denise. So... You interviewed her, didn't you, Nick? And and she seemed pretty pretty happy for Angela overall. And, and she, she's been posting about how buzzing she'd be to get hold of that Grand Prix title. So in the yeah, end, this is a it nice feels way to me like, it. Yeah, it's a good chance for her to maybe get a few more fights under her belt. You know, she isn't that experienced. Um, she is, obviously was number one contender or maybe still is by the rankings. But I don't think it's a, a massive negative for Denise. I think go out there and prove you, you really are the best. And then that just builds the Angela Lee fight even more, I think. And yeah, I just got off interviewing Angela Lee and she said that she's going to be coming back in the next year. That's the plan. And she's going to fight that winner. So it doesn't look like she's going to be out too long. But uh, Leon, maybe we can ask you about these four title fights uh, announced for Inside the Matrix. What a great name in Singapore. And what are you looking forward to most? I think the big ones, the Martin Ewan-San Lee fight, 
um, on paper, that's going to be, I think, the, the, the best matchup. Uh, both, interestingly, got the Vietnamese roots. Um, Martin, I think, is one of the best pound-for-pound -pound fighters in one championship. Than Lee's looked amazing in his, I think, three performances in one, three, three finishes. So that's going to be amazing. Hopefully, Yong La is taking on uh, the undefeated Rania Deridia. Um, so that's going to be fun. Um, yeah, and the Christian Lee, it's always fun to watch that. That Again, there was a debate whether Erie Lapicus should have, is rightfully the number one contender, but I guess we'll find out soon enough. And then, well, yeah, we're going to be five title fights. Angela just told me as well she was going to be on this card and she was going to probably defend against Denise, but they hadn't. Oh, right. Yeah, so maybe four is enough, right? Uh, Andrew, what's your pick of these fights? <laughs> Well, conveniently, I, I think they're all absolute bangers, but the one Leon didn't mention, I'm very much up for the Panda rematch with Tiffany Teo because I was there in Jakarta, I think probably sat not too far away from Leon, what, what was it, a couple of years ago now? And it went four rounds and you were struck by just how resilient and hard as nails Tiffany Teo is. If we're being fair, she did take a beating that night and I was blown away by just the level of striking of the panda, her boxing, her counters were so impressive. But Tiffany just wouldn't go away. She was kind of like the Singaporean zombie that night. But then since then, training with Major Overall, unbelievable improvement from Tiffany Cho. I mean, she beat Michelle Nicolini, you know, eight-time BJJ World Champion. And, uh, she, you know, she followed that up with another landmark win in her career. And we, we've been kind of waiting for this rematch for a long time. I think Tiffany has leveled up and physically she looks brilliant, doesn't she? She looks like she's in the best shape of her life. So she looks very hungry and with something to prove. So I think we're going to see it be a lot closer than last time. And she is very rightfully the, the number one contender. And I was speaking to someone about it earlier today. She's got to be one of the best MMA fighters in Singapore in history, right? I know it's a very young sport in that country, but uh, I'm really interested to see what happens there. Yeah, and all these title fights, apart from the Ongla Derrida, they were set in stone before the pandemic, weren't they? Yeah, Leon, did you think they were ever going to change course, maybe? Or are you, good, you happy to see them honour those agreements they had made to the challenges? I think, see, I mean, like I say, Tiffany Tio, she earned it. I think me and Andy were in Singapore in February, and she just, yeah, she just, she's just one of them fighters where a little bit underestimated, underappreciated, and she, yeah, she earned it. And she said, I'm, I'm happy. I was going to mention that fight next, um, but yeah, that, that could be fun. That's good. It's certainly going to be more competitive than last time, you'd think. And like I say, the other ones, yeah, I think Martin and Than, that, Than Lee, that's the, that's the obvious one. Um, Ong La, obviously, he was supposed to fight. Rainy had uh, originally, but he was injured, so then obviously he's going to fight Vito, uh, Vitali, uh, Bigfoot. So, <laughs> um, so I, I, I think it's going to be, you say, only four um, title fights, but four fun title fights in one night. It's going to be a, it's going to be a fun one. Mm. And I think they also announced, didn't they? They confirmed Big that dash. Brandon Big Dash, that's it. <laughs> Vito Bigfoot, I think you call him. Yeah. Vitali Big Dash, that's it. Yeah. Um, we've also got, it looks like Arj Singh Bullard is going to challenge Brandon Vera still for the heavyweight title. Leon and Andy, and did, did you get a date from Chatri? Did he mention anything about that? No confirmed date for that one, right? But battle agreement signed, it's going to go ahead as planned. Uh, that, that one should be a good challenge for Brandon Vera. You know, he's been the heavyweight champion for a long time and Aryan Bular has got all the pedigree in the world. You know, he's a UFC veteran. He's got a lot of support behind him, got a great win last time out as well, saying all the right things. And, and this could be a really, really good contest between these two. All right. Well, do we know any other big title fights? Or are you surprised, Leon, that they're doing so many in one night? I know they want to have a big bang when they return and make a big splash, but maybe they should pace themselves a bit more and just you know have one on each each week, each month. I don't know how long they're going to have to stay like this in Singapore. Well, who knows? I mean, it's, it's literally... We'll probably all find it hard to be. We're in October now, 
and there's no sign of things going back to normal still. So I think, yeah, they could have maybe spread them out. But I think there's so many huge fights that can be made. If they can put on international cars in Singapore, in Manila, in Jakarta, and get athletes in, they can create a safe bubble, then they might not be as quite as big as uh, returning in the end of um, the end of the month with the four title fights. But there, there'll be some fun fight cards. Yeah, I'm hoping I can get over to Singapore because Hong Kong and Singapore are looking to open a travel bubble. What about you guys, Malaysia? You, you, any chance you may be able to travel? Yeah, it's not looking great, is it? Uh, it? It's one thing getting over there and it's another thing getting back again. Uh, there's all sorts of kind of fun things starting to develop around the region for, for different combat sports and especially with one. And I would absolutely love to. You boys, I mean, how many times have we hung out at shows? And you also know just how much more it resonates with people when you get an interview with a fighter and you've done it in person. For some reason, it just it does have that impact that you might not necessarily get when you do it over zoom but we do our best uh yeah bottom line can't wait to get back to shows again if only just to see those two beautiful faces on my left and right in person there yeah. they are <laughs> i know i miss hanging out with leon in hotel lobbies it's it's, it's such a fun experience i was but, thinking i mean i think last we got a podcast was i think after the first bangkok card so that was what july 31st was it was it the last day of july mm, yeah the first one back yeah the, the first bangkok yeah. card and we were saying we we're talking about the thing the, the one schedule and the last few car, cards were i think manila jakarta and KL in december and i was thinking ah oh, i'm sure things will be back to normal then so you know we'll do the six card i think it was going to originally give me six cards in bangkok three cards in china and i was thinking by then We'll be back up and running. The world will be normal. But now I'm thinking January. But now even January is only two months away. Yeah. <laughs> Not far, only around the corner. And are we going to be, are we going to be at a travelling? Are we going to be, I don't know. We'll have to wait. And so again, I guess for one, you can see why they're only announcing fights and cards at the last minute because how can you physically plan anything when mm. we, we have no idea and especially it's out of their hands it's in the government's hands you don't know what the governments are going to say whether it's whether it's right whether it's wrong you know it's only calculated guesses and so i think that's a good point it's a bit of a logistical nightmare isn't it so going back to your question uh, you asked leon about them kind of putting all the sexy names on one night I'm a fan of it in a way because we don't know what's going to happen. How many, how long have a lot of these guys and girls been on the shelf? And they have gone quite heavy on their on Muay Thai and kickboxing in, in recent cards, particularly on the Thailand shows, right? A lot of those main events. So it's really nice that this October 30th is a massive focus and celebration of their top MMA stars, guys who haven't been able to compete for a long time. It's debatable. Some people do and don't believe in ring rust. But then there are other people, if you look at someone like Christian Lee, who kind of hammered through the division when he was a teenager. And then he, he ran into a bit of a stumbling block a couple of times against Martin Nguyen, but then looked to level up again. If you look at what he did to Dagi, I think people were pretty blown away. And then winning the title against Shinya, he's, he's now kind of at that stage where he's got a bit bigger. And you look at the way he's developed and he's gone up that other level. So he's just gone away, got his head down, allowed kind of any niggling injuries to heal. And I'm really excited to see just how good he's going to look, having had a little bit of a breather, because hasn't he been prolific, ferocious ever since he came on the scene as a 17-year-old? Yuri Lapicus, what a test for him. You know, the guy's a beast, undefeated. I'm really looking forward to that one as well. And, and just generally speaking, having that star power, all the big names, one night, massive, you know, we could see a massive swing in, in the title, in, in the champions of each division. So it's pretty cool that it's all going on one, what down on one night and hopefully it creates a bit of a buzz. Yeah, I'm sure it will create a big buzz. And as Leon was saying, it could be ages before we even get to be there in person. I mean, what did Chatri say on that call yesterday, guys? He said something like, I expect it to be another 12 months before there's fans inside arenas again. Well, yeah, who knows? 
I mean, literally. I don't even I don't even know if there's any point guessing. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm so optimistic. I'm thinking, yeah, it'll be by next month, uh, by next month, by next month, I'm going to the point where I'm just going to stop optimistically guessing it's going to be soon because it's just no sign of it ending. Yeah, you can't well, plan for anything. But if you look at Rising, uh, they had 5,000 fans at the Super Saitama Arena for their last event. That for me is hugely encouraging. I had a little Google reminder on my phone that told me I was supposed to be in Tokyo for a one show this month, you know? So Japan is always there, right? It's kind of been forgotten about, but those Japan shows have been the best shows ever in, in one history, haven't they? So I hope that that can be put back on the calendar soon and with live fans sooner rather than later. Well, what we do know is going to happen is on Friday is going to be one championships. First show back in Singapore since February. We've got the reign of dynasties. Let me bring up the card here on screen. We're going to a little breakdown here for you, preview what's going on. I've just got to find it on my computer. Here you go, guys. Right. Yep. Main event got Sam A against Josh Tonner. Sam A is defending his strawweight Muay Thai title. I'm going to get some quick previews and picks from you guys uh leon why don't we start with you do you see any hope for josh tonner here obviously had that highlight reel ko i think of andy Housen in february but sam a is just a different level isn't he he's the man yeah i mean he's one of many you could say the man from thailand when it comes to muay thai um i mean he he obviously he is in one of the fights of the year last year everyone talks about rod tang versus jonathan haggerty in may when Jonathan Haggerty beat Sam A in Jakarta. That was an unbelievable fight. And that was at flyweight. So Sam A's moved down to strawweight now. Obviously, he's got the belt. And he looks even more dangerous. So I'd say he's quite a big favourite. But you, you can't rule out Josh, Josh Toner. And do you see any way for Josh? Or is this just a, a banker for Sam A? I don't know. It's difficult at this level to say that anything's a banker, right? But Sam A is a living legend. I mean, those elbows, I expect to just be raining down. I, I expect a finish from him. You expect him to deliver the goods. He's double champion for a reason. This is his second uh, Aussie. Uh, we saw him back in February against Rocky Ogden. He had John Wayne Parr in his corner. That was another big performance. You know, the legend against the kind of up-and-comer Tonner, this would mean everything for him if he does get the victory. He's already dreaming big. He's talking about wanting to challenge for the Sam A's kickboxing title as well if he wins. And he wants to put Australian Muay Thai on the map. There are a lot of interesting fighters coming from Dan under these days. And uh, he also spoke about wanting to bring one championship down to Australia, which is, you don't hear too much about that. We hear a lot about India and the US, right? But that doesn't seem to be on their plans now. I'm not sure if a big win over Sam A would be enough to convince him to do a show there, but it would be a massive feather in the cap, not just for him, but for kind of a growing generation of Aussie martial artists. So that's what we love about this sport, right? That spectacle, that theatre and that opportunity for somebody to to pull off a dream win. I mean, he's in the main event for a reason. He's earned his shot at the main man. Do I think he's going to do it? Probably not, but I'm, I'm interested to, to see him have a crack. Okay, sounds like we got two for Sam A there. Uh, what about this one? Another Aussie you mentioned. Yes, uh, they do want to. <clears throat> Josh wants to bring a card to Australia. Wouldn't hurt if if Reese McLaren can get a win. He's up against Alexi Toivonen, who I believe is undefeated. Is that right, Leon? Yeah, so that's a that's a fun matchup. The Reese is obviously five in the rankings flyweight, so that spot's up for grabs. Um, Reese, such a nice guy, so popular amongst them, one, the, the roster. Um, I'm speaking to him, I think you are, Andy, as well. I'm speaking to him later on today, so it'll be interesting to see his mindset. But he's always fun to watch. Great on the grappler. In fact, it's going to be interesting to see whether it does end up on the ground. That's where they're both their strengths lie. But as we've seen before, sometimes that can counteract each other and ends up just being three solid rounds on the feet. So... I'm really interested to see how that one pans out. And Andrew, Reese has a bit to prove, doesn't he? He was still very bitter, I think, about that defeat by Danny Kingad in Manila. I think he thought he should have had that spot in the 
the final of the Grand Prix against Demetrius Johnson. Do you expect him to, to come out hot here? Oh, he's such a talent and it feels like he's been around forever, doesn't it? He's only 29 years old, but you know he's, he's had a shot at the title. He is elite on the ground. I think a little bit underrated on the feet as well. Uh, before a Mark Striegel interview, I went back and I had a look at that fight. I think uh, he fought Striegel in 2015, it's five years ago now, and he hammered Mark Striegel. He's about to make his UFC debut. Like, If you look at his body of work, McLaren, he's taken on the very best in one championship. You know, Some he's won, some he hasn't, but he has bags and bags of experience. Toivonen is a bit of a new face on the scene. But looking at his 7-0 record, all of them are finishes. And, and what I find interesting about him, he came through the Evolve trials uh, along, along with Troy Worthen, which I think is kind of an interesting tack from one of picking up this maybe lesser-known international talent, Troy Worthen undefeated as well. This is a real step up for, for Toivon, and I think this is the biggest challenge that he's had arguably in his career so far. Get a win here, you know, as you mentioned, gets himself into the top five. Difficult one to call because they're both excellent on the ground. Uh, and underrated on the feet, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go Toivonen here. I'm gonna go Toivonen. He just looks very explosive, a real talent, and and this would be a, a landmark win if he can get that victory over McLaren. But you know, I might change my mind speaking to Reese a bit later. You know, I'm, I'm easily swayed by uh, by the confidence and bravado. Yeah, I think we're all gonna have Reese interviews today. <laughs> um, Leon, you have him for Asian Persuasion. You're doing it for Asian MMA, I guess, Andrew. I'll have him for yes. SCMP. So, everyone, please take your pick of all three. <laughs> uh, yeah, all right. How about this one? Amir Khan against Rahul Raju. Uh, it's going to be an emotional fight for Amir. Uh, another interview I just did, you know, with him today. His dad, uh, 61 years old, has been diagnosed with terminal brain cancer. This could be the last fight he ever sees his son in. Amir is obviously looking to get that victory in case that happens. But if we take the emotion out of it, what do you think, Leon? Can can he pull off the victory? I think Amir is obviously going to be the favourite. He's got the experience. He's he's fought those who he's, he's got. I think, I think he still holds the most uh, knockouts in one championship. Um, but then Rahul is going to be full of confidence. He came in, he lost, I think he lost his first three, but um, he put in an amazing performance against Scenario Benario on less than a week's notice. He fought Gary Tonin, who no one wants to fight, and he defended Gary Tonin's submissions brilliantly. Now he's got two wins, I think two wins back to back. So, I mean, well, I spoke to him Monday, yeah. He couldn't be any more confident. So, I'm going to speak to Amir later. So, um, yeah, but I say regarding Amir, how tough situation for him, and I guess he's going to be so motivated. So I guess he's going to, he's his motivation is going to be unbelievable, and Rahul's confidence is sort of unbelievable at the moment. So it's going to be a battle, really. Yeah, it should be a good scrap, Andrew. What do you take? Sorry, who are you taking in this fight? I love the matchup. It's been one they've been wanting to make for ages. It's, it's a Singapore-centric matchup. Rahul might be the Kerala crusher, but he's he's much loved in Singapore. I think he's lived there for eight years now, studied there, coaches there uh, over at Juggernaut Fight Club. And so it's a bit difficult. I'm a bit biased because I trained at Juggernaut for many years and were you know, close with Rahul. I've had to crawl along the gym with him on my back, which I don't recommend. Uh, talk about the guy's confidence. I think it was after he lost to Shannon Wirachai. You know, he got caught on his debut and, and it, was, yeah. it was a nasty knockout. But then Eddie Alvarez signed and we we're having a chat in the gym about Eddie Alvarez and Rahul was intent. He was like, I would, I would beat Eddie Alvarez. And he, he, was, he was very, very intent. The confidence has never wavered. You know, you mentioned Leon, those string of defeats for him. I mean, took on one of the best grapplers in MMA of all time, arguably, and Gary Tone and took him to the third round, held his own and was really unlucky against Bonario. Even when you're on a three fight losing streak, the confidence was just, it was quite astounding, really. So for him to have a couple of victories behind him, it just seems like, you know, his belief has been backed up in a way now. He's got something to show for his hard work and, and the belief. You know, Amir Khan, he's never struggled like this in his career. 
And I can't even comment on, on what kind of an emotional weight that would have mm. with, with things going on with his dad. I mean, you just, you can't even fathom how difficult that is to deal with. I'm edging towards uh, Rahul though in this one. Again, you can accuse a slight bias, but I just feel speaking to him, he, he seemed absolutely certain. He said he'd like it to go all three rounds, but it's not going to. It's going to go uh, probably in the second or third via submission. And I believe him. <laughs> well, yeah, let's see what happens. Uh, three other fights on this card. Uh, just recap them. We've got Dej Damron against Hexagetsu. We've got Echo Ronnie Saputra against Murugan Silva Rahodo. And we've also got Roshan against Liu Peng Shui. Should be a fun card. Good to see so many MMA bouts back, right, guys? Because we've just been starved of quality one championship MMA. We've had to make do with the Muay Thai, which is is great and all. But I'm I'm really happy to see the MMA back. I'm just quite impressed with your pronunciation of the names. Really, I I, st oh, I struggled. I was English ringing names. it so hard there. I was like, I hope I got that right. <laughs> Mate, buzzing for MMA to be back, to be honest with you. Uh, I really enjoyed the Muay Thai, though, over in Thailand. And I think a lot of fans, that's what's cool about the culmination of all the different disciplines is that's what you'd hope in a perfect world, right? That come, they tune in for the Muay Thai. Oh, I'll dabble in a cheeky bit of MMA, please, or, or vice versa. So now MMA gets to take the front row seat in Singapore, which is kind of the spiritual home of one championship. I mentioned before, Amir Khan, Rahul, they're kind of both hometown boys for different reasons. Such a shame that we can't have fans there live. But we want to get the appetite really going again for, for some of these guys who they live and breathe this stuff. They've spent their entire life for these kind of moments. You don't know how much it means to people like Rahul. Who's ha they've had to wait and wait and wait. They can't plan. This Amir Khan fight was talked about six months ago. I spoke to his coach about it and they were buzzing for it then. And they've had to wait. Now it's finally here. So, you know, I'm delighted for them. And, and it's also, it's good for us. You know, we, we love our mixed martial arts and to be able to cover it, it's, it's good to have it back. I'm looking forward to all of it. Well, we may not be able to be there, but I'm happy to tell everyone we're going to be doing on SCMP MMA a, a watch along. We're going to have myself, John, John Ko, who is with SCMP MMA 2, I invited Leon. I don't know if he's still interested. Andrew, you're obviously invited too. If you want to sit and watch the fights with us and talk crap about them, we'll be doing that whole thing. Otherwise, yeah, fans, you can all you can all watch along with us and you can interact. We'll we'll have the the comments on it. We'll all be live. Let's just have a bit of fun. But yeah, I'm extending an open invitation to both of you guys if you want to be in with it. Mate, sounds how, fun. How much do we get paid? Um, I'll have to get back to you. Uh, <laughs> I'll speak to the bosses here. I'll take one yellow T-shirt. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> T-shirt I can do. Maybe a beer next time I see you. Oh, Leon doesn't drink, does he? Um, a vegan lunch. Another vegan lunch. I drink. Just, do you? Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I'm not a casual drinker. I don't oh, drink yeah. the odd beer. What's the point? I like to be sober or very, 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 very drunk. None of that, <laughs> none of that in between rubbish. Drink one beer. What's the point? Come oh on, yeah, man of extremes. I'm from England. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did see you go from zero to ten in KL last time I saw you at the after party. I don't, I don't miss the belt. <laughs> no, it's good. Uh, it's a shame we can't all be there uh, watching it because yeah, obviously it's so much fun. But we'll do the next best thing, which is a little watch along on Friday, six p.m. start. Is it, guys? Later, I think eight thirty local time. I think. Okay. Glad to see you're all over it, Nick. <laughs> I've just been used to those Bangkok start times. I don't know why. Yeah. Is it well, that's that's as well? Well, we'll see you at 8.30 <laughs> then, guys. Uh, that is Singapore time. I think Hong Kong's the same. I'm not sure about Malaysia. What are you guys? Same, yeah. So that's 7.30 Bangkok time then. 8.30, yeah. 8.30 KL, Singapore, Hong Kong. Perfect. All right, see you there, everyone. Uh, thanks for Andrew and Leon for jumping on today. Uh, great to talk, great for your insight and your picks and predictions. Let's see who gets the most right on Friday. And thanks, everyone, for watching. We'll see you again next time.